It's the 21st of June today and I've just got down the allotment um, and I'm in the greenhouse and everything's getting on um, really quite well in the greenhouse which is fabulous. Um, I've just got three more plants to pot up into six inch pots, just three which is so exciting. I've, I've done everything apart from these three. Um, I've got uh, some Spanish cucumbers. Um, I have done some Spanish cucumbers already. Um, I did those the other day but um, I left one um, to show you. Um, these um, aren't like the normal sort of um, long English cucumbers. These grow to about six or seven inches long uh, and you have to peel the skin because the skin is quite bitter. And they tend not to suffer from any sort of um, diseases which seems to be brilliant. Um, if you are in Spain, my mum grows these and they, um, they grow outside so obviously if you live in a hot climate then you can grow these outside but um, I grew these last year and they seem to do very well. You can see that we've got some tendrils here which um, they'll send out and it will hang on to anything that it finds just to support itself. We also have um, a, a flower here and there's another tiny little flower down there and in fact there's one that there's, there's about four all together and underneath this flower you can see a tiny little cucumber growing which is absolutely wonderful and there's one there as well um, so if we look underneath we can see that the roots are coming through the bottom of the pot so therefore they need to be potted up I also have here some cantaloupe melons here um, I was hoping that they would be slightly bigger but um, I have got another four here um, and some are a little bit bigger than others but uh, they, they seem to be doing fairly well. It's very difficult to grow melons in this country. I need to get hold of the musk melons for next year hopefully because they seem to be better in our climate. Um, but if we again look at the bottom of the pot you can see the roots are coming through there so they need to be moved on and my one little aubergine this is called Casper um, I did sow lots of aubergines and um, only one seemed to come up so um, I'm not quite sure why I don't know whether it was because when I sowed them it suddenly dropped in temperature or what I don't know but I have one so uh, I'm going to put these into individual six inch pots or they're about six inch pots um, and um, then I will um, put them with the rest of the ones that I've done. So let me show you how to pot them up. Okay so here they all are. I've put them in their, in their pots so that I know which pot to use for them. So I'll start with the melon and all I need to do is to just place some uh, compost in the bottom and then just very carefully tip it upside down. Now you can see that there's lots of lovely roots coming on there so hopefully now they're in a bigger pot uh, they'll start to grow quite rapidly. Just fill around the rest of the space with the compost and when it's full up then just gently pat it down so that's one. Let's do the cucumber. I'm going to put the cucumber in the bigger of the pots just because the plant itself is that much bigger and they do tend to spread quite a lot these these ones these plants. So there we are lots and lots of roots around there all spreading out beautifully. Put it in the middle so that the roots have got a nice uh, equal amount of space to, um, to spread out. Don't put it um, on one side and again we'll fill this in and then just give it a gentle pat down. So there's that one, we'll put his label back in and then the last one we'll come to is my little aubergine. Um, it has been very, very slow. It's grown a bit 
since it's been in this pot and it's been in this pot for several weeks now um, so I'm not quite sure I'm not expecting much from this to be honest with you um, but you never know it might suddenly surprise me we can't see any roots all around here that have, have sort of filled out the pot because the plants really quite small but I am hoping keep your fingers crossed that it will suddenly have a little boost of energy and uh, and grow absolutely magnificently so that's all those three done and I'll show you where I'm going to put them right so here are the other ones there's two there you can see this one's bushed out really really well they've all started to get flowers on them there's two there and then there's another two there so i'm going to put this one in here hopefully it'll fit just about actually i think i might move that one over there just because those pots are slightly smaller so they're on the top of the staging here so hopefully they'll start to spread up um, and out and uh, they'll cling on to the staging and the sticks so that's those and here are um, four of the melons. They're in quite large pots, so I don't actually have space um, to put another pot. So I've had to uh, put the one that I've just potted up into a, se a separate uh, tray. So um, I'll show you that. Okay, so here are the two that I potted up. We've got the melon at the back and we've got the aubergine at the front. All I need to do now is to give them a water, water from the base, so that uh, the compost will soak up the, um, the water and it'll encourage the roots um, of the plant to go down and fill up the pot. Right, well the greenhouse is now complete. Uh, I thought I'd just give you a quick um, show of it. Uh, up here we've got some um, bush tomatoes. There's a few brassicas just down there that I need to get in. And then we've got tomatoes along the bottom and then along the bottom again. A few more cabbages to get in and up here we've got um, a melon and the aubergine. And more tomatoes there. <laughs> and more tomatoes there and there and then there's some cabbages that i need to get in very very soon and some more tomatoes bush ones at the top there there are some um uh, cucumbers and below guess what yes that's right well done more tomatoes more tomatoes there a few more brassicas up here some bush tomatoes up here and the final shelf i've got some melons here and some more tomatoes right down the bottom there so the greenhouse is completely chock-a-block right what i'm going to plant out now are um are my romanesco uh cauliflowers the romanesco ones are sort of like they look like little green triangles they're very very pretty um i'm running out of space so i'm actually going to have to plant them um, a little bit closer than I normally would. Normally I would space them about nine inches apart from each other, maybe about a foot, but I might have to sort of just squeeze them in a little bit closer. I'm sort of having to intercrop stuff at the moment, but even doing that I'm running out of space. Um, so um, yes, it's, it's going to be fun, shall we say. Um, so let me just show you how they're getting on. They're doing really well. They're all about this sort of height. Some leaves have actually been uh, been nibbled, but don't worry about that. Uh, just do check underneath, and if you do find any sort of white fly or anything like that, then just get rid of them. You can either use a spray or a um, diluted washing up liquid is actually very good because it stops them from gripping um, and it, it clogs them up and they just slip off and, and die. Uh, so if you want to go for sort of the eco way. Um, so they're all about seven, eight inches tall um, and they've all got some lovely roots coming through the bottom. Uh, so let me show you how I plant these out in the ground. Now I have to be very careful doing them here because I've got the compost heap behind me um, and I've actually got bumblebees uh, that have decided to make a home in there. So um, I can't really get too close. I'm just gonna have to be very, very careful. So next to my broad beans here, which are growing absolutely beautifully, um, 
they have started to get a little bit of black fly so I'm going to have to sort that out. Um, the ladybirds are doing the best they can but I might have to again get some diluted washing up liquid and just spray them. That usually um, uh, sorts them out. So I've got some space here. Make sure it's all weed free and just give it a quick turnover before you start planting. We don't want that slug. That can go over there. Okay, so I've got a nice little space here which must be about 18 inches, I guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plant one there and then I'm going to plant one here. So it's very, actually very close to the, the edge of the bed but they've still got a nice amount of space in between them. There is, a, I, I reckon, about uh, seven, eight inches between them. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to dig a nice deep hole and when we put these in the hole we need to make sure that they're slightly lower than they were in the compost. They don't grow tall but they do need that amount of stability. So tip it out of its pot and these have been very very wet because I've kept them very well watered um, and you can see that there's lots of lovely roots um, growing around there which is wonderful. So pop it in the soil a little bit lower than it was in the pot and then just bring the soil back round and give it a good push down. So I'll carry on with these and I'll space them all about um, eight inches, between six and eight inches apart from each other. And when I finish, then I'll come back and show you. Okay, so there they are. The Romanesco. I've got 14 in there. That's not all of them. I've still got um, to put some um, in other places, but I'll um, I'll find holes for those. But what you need to do now is you need to um, protect them from the slugs and snails because it's been very very wet, and these will be very tasty for the slugs and snails. So make sure you protect them from the slugs and snails. Um, and um, also protect them from um, from the birds either netting or putting s some plastic bags on sticks or, or bottles on sticks or, or whatever. So um, that's those done. Uh, now I need to move on to something else. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is um, something slightly a little sort of unconventional. It's me, of course it's unconventional. Um, I'm running out of space. Shh, don't tell Mark. Um, I don't want another allotment. I've got more than enough space. I just sowed too much this year. Um, so what I'm having to now do is sort of intercrop stuff. So I've planted something, it's growing beautifully, and now I'm having to put um, some bits in between. That's basically what intercropping is. Um, I've got the sweet corn here, which is growing, or some of the sweet corn here, which is growing really, really well in its block. And there's a lot of space in between them. So um, some people, and I've never done this, but some people do something called three sisters. You grow your uh, sweet corn and then you plant your climbing bean, which then climbs up that. And then you plant your squashes all the way around and it sort of does a, a, a ground cover uh, and it keeps the weeds down. Um, but I've, I've never tried that and my beans are over there and my squashes and pumpkins are over there uh, and my sweet corn is here so because there's a lot of space left and because um, they grow sweet corns grow quite tall what I'm going to plant in between them are some sprouting broccoli um, now the thing is with um, broccoli or any brassicas you have to sort of um, stop the birds from getting to it but I'm wondering if because I've got the sweet corn and they've got their long leaves growing, whether they'll help deter the birds. I don't know. I'll give it a go and see what happens. Um, so I'm just in the middle of clearing the bed because there's some weeds in there. Um, but my, uh, this is the red arrow uh, purple sprouting broccoli, which is doing really, really well, but desperately needs to go out. Um, so I'm going to start planting it in between my sweet corn. Um, so it's a little bit of an experiment. I don't see why 
it shouldn't work. The sweet corn will have finished and then the purple sprouting broccoli then comes in afterwards. So theoretically it should be okay. Um, but once uh, sort of frost has gone in your area uh, and your brassicas are sort of about six, seven, eight inches tall, these are a bit taller than that, then they'll be ready to go outside in the ground. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so I've, um, I've weeded round here. I've still got a load more to do, but I thought I would do a little bit just to show you. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of space in between, free space. So uh, it's such a shame to, to waste it. Um, the sweet corn I've sort of placed about a foot apart from each other, maybe slightly more. Um, so there's all this spare coverage. So I was, all this space. So I just thought, well, why not just sort of plant them in between? Um, I'll position them most probably about nine inches apart from each other. I won't be able to net them, but I'm hoping that the leaves of the sweet corn will um, will sort of do the same uh, the same job. Um, so I'm just going to sort of place them like that. I think if I put one between each one and then maybe one in the middle. And then hopefully I'll, um, I'll be able to get quite a lot of them in. So, here we go. Let's, I'll tell you what, I'll swap those ones over. So, dig a hole um, for your plant to go in. Um, just be careful uh, when you're digging because of the sweet corn roots. But at this point, they shouldn't have come out too far. Um, when the sweet corn have finished, you won't be able to take them out until the, uh, the sprouting broccoli has finished um, because the, the roots of the sweet corn would have spread really quite wide. But you can always cut them down. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I don't see that that would be a problem. So dig a nice hole and you need to plant your, um, your broccoli, your sprouting broccoli, slightly deeper in the soil. Um, than it would um, when than it was in the pot. Um, they grow quite tall, so they need that extra little bit of stability. So then, once you've put it in the hole, then just fill it round and give it a nice firm down. So I think that's a good use of space. So I'll carry on, uh, and when I've done them, then I'll show you. Okay, so there they are, in between. Uh, the sweet corn or one of my varieties of sweet corn. I've put um, some uh, What have I put red red arrow? Um, sprouting broccoli and then slightly further up I had a few Romanesco cauliflowers and I've done the same with them now um, I've still got some cabbages to put in and I've got another bed of um, sweet corn um, slightly further up so I'm going to do the same with the cabbages then um, make sure that you protect them from the slugs and snails um, obviously I can't protect them from the birds but I'm hoping that with the leaves from the sweet corn that that will be fine but what I might do is I might put some upturned bottles on some bamboo canes and they'll rattle it and hopefully they'll help keep the birds away right now um this evening I'm actually doing um, a gardening talk for um, a women's institute um, which is so sweet I've actually done one before but I thought I would take um, any produce that is ready so I've been having a look these are my radishes um, that I sowed I don't know about eight weeks ago maybe um, and they're actually ready for harvesting you'll most probably notice that um, the leaves have been nibbled a bit the leaves are quite spiky actually and I tend not to eat these so um, that's not a problem as long as the radish underneath isn't um, isn't damaged then that's fine uh, the, these ones that I sowed they were called rainbow now I've I've harvested some already can you see those they're absolutely gorgeous but I just thought I would show you how to harvest them now you want them about that sort of size um, what's that about an inch across or so. Um, if they get too big, then they go woody. If you find that your, uh, that your radish has um, 
gone to seed so it's sh something has shot up from the middle then it would be woody inside so it's always best not to eat those ones so just run your hand just move the leaves backwards and have a look at them you'll actually be able to see them just slightly above the surface if they're not um, big enough then leave them in and then have a look in about a week's time um, but there's one here that you can see which looks lovely move some of the soil round just to uh, just to check it's big enough just like that I hope you can see that one and then just to harvest it all you need to do is to just um, hold it for hold the leaves firmly where they join the radish just give it a quick wiggle and then give it a quick pull so there is a lovely radish really really nice the good thing about these rainbow ones is that they vary from white all the way through to sort of a dark purpley color so i'm just going to go along and i'm going to see if there are any others that are ready for harvesting if they're not then just leave them in and come and check them in about a week's time there's another one there beautiful multicolored one that one um, so I'll go and harvest a load of stuff for uh, for this evening's talk and then when I have then I'll show you well I've harvested um, a few bits uh, for the talk this evening um, I'm also going to take a trough full of um, carrots uh, and a couple of pots of uh, bush tomatoes and anything else in the the greenhouse at home like maybe one of the sweet peppers or the chilies or something um, as well just to show um, but I've harvested some bits and pieces from the allotment to take as well you've seen um, the radish let me get hold of all of those or as many as I can they look lovely they're all sorts of different different colors those ones there uh, I've got some strawberries there we are um, and I got uh, a couple of um, globe artichokes which is actually the first time I've harvested these so um, I've I managed to, to get some but I will harvest some more uh, another time and show you how to do those don't worry about that uh, a couple of kohlrabi most of them are still quite small and I wouldn't normally harvest them now but I just thought I would take a couple um, I've got one that seems to have split um, which is fine that's just the way it is isn't it um, I'm gonna leave all the soil on and then they at least know that um, they're mine goodness knows what mess I'll leave on the table and this one actually is a really good size it looks about the size of a tennis ball um, and you want to harvest them when they're just a little bit bigger than a tennis ball so this is um, is great it's very 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 good I'm very pleased with that uh, and last but no means least um, some rhubarb um, now I seem to have I don't know why but I seem to grow massive rhubarb not skinny little sticks when I first got here um, and I was digging and making a, a rhubarb bed I had a couple of crowns of rhubarb that I'd bought from home and I put a load of stuff over in the green waste pile and somebody had dumped some rhubarb so I moved it over um, why somebody would dump rhubarb I have no idea um, and uh, there was actually also some rhubarb left on this plot anyway and the guy um, who used to have this plot who gave it up because he um, he had too much space um, he said to me he said oh there's one in there somewhere he said but you'll want to throw it away he said because it's it's really spindly and you know very old I wasn't going to throw it away I whacked it in the rhubarb bed gave it a load of manure and it's still going and I've been on here for this is my 11th season and it's not skinny spindly ones I get huge big fat rhubarb uh, stalks from it so uh, give it a good feed once a year and it loves you forever um, so yeah I've got four you know these would make actually an umbrella if it poured down with rain the leaves are so big um, but yes I've got I've got four <laughs> um, so uh, I'll, I'll take those leaves and all I think um, how I managed to, to grow it all quite so large I don't know and I've got a rhubarb bed over there and they're just as big so I don't know um, so with all the other bits and pieces um, hopefully that'll that'll be enough um, but uh, yes it's fun doing a talk it's really good I've done them before 
Um, so hopefully these people will enjoy it as much as, as uh, the other ones have. Um, but I think that's going to be it for today down here. Um, I'm just going to do a bit of clearing up. I've been down here for about four hours now uh, and um, I'm, I'm ready to go home. Uh, so hopefully tomorrow will be dry or partly dry, especially in the morning, and then I can be up here again. But I've got lots done, but I've still got more to do. But I'm getting there, slowly but surely I'm getting there. Well, I hope what, you've, uh, what I've shown you today you found interesting and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye.